Now in today's video I'm going to attempt to either restore this to original condition or just do a slight custom slash restoration. At any rate, it'll be some form of a somewhat new looking car. If you watched the original video of me acquiring this casting through the mail, you may recall that it didn't have a return address. I didn't know who sent it. Well, later on, I did get an email from, I believe I'm pronouncing this correct, Akil, stating that he had been in the French Alps doing some metal detecting, and he found the car there. It picked it up, and he took some pictures of it when he found it, and then, of course, when he had it at home. So, cool little backstory. I really love the story of this car. So, this will probably stay in my collection, and it will not go into the grandsons just because of the cool story. So, let's continue on. As the car rotates on the display of Doom here, you can see that it clearly needs a restoration. And there's a few things I love about this. For one, it's a Ferrari. What's there not to love? Number two, it's a cool casting, which kind of goes back to the Ferrari thing. But more importantly, it definitely needs a restoration. There's no question about it. Some of my previous restoration slash custom videos have been somewhat questionable. They either really could just use a good cleaning or some touch-up paint. This one needs much more than that. The other cool thing about this, yes, it needs a restoration, but it's all pretty much there. Minus the wheels, tires, well there's actually three rims, one's missing completely, but the glass is intact. Now it may be scratched up, we can fix that, but even the little trailer hitch is still present, which is very odd. I've very rarely see that. It's either usually broken off, chewed off, of course, if you're me, as a kid, I probably chewed it off. Or it's just not there. So we got the interior, the glass, and we've got the key components of the car. Now in my videos, I use a few different vices. You'll sometimes see me using a Harbor Freight bench vice with rubber feet on it. Works great. And then this watch vice. I really dig this one because I can just sit it in front of the camera. I don't have to reposition anything. And it's right there. Makes it really easy. Holds the car really well. You can take these pins out, move them, however you want to do it. But then I do get comments, why do you use a vise? Why don't you just hold it in your hand? Well, I used to do that. A few years ago, I was drilling away and went right through the finger. Didn't feel so great, so uh, now I'm a big wimp and I will stick with the vise from here on out. I suggest you do the same. We're going to take our small bit, which is a .050 and I know I repeat this about a million times, but this may be your first time watching, so we're going to go through it all again. Now we drill a small hole in the center of each of these. Not too far, it's a good idea to put a collar or a piece of tape on so you know you're not going to go through the casting. I typically don't drill as far as I need to on the first go around, I will do that on the next. Now on the back, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to take my larger bit and get rid of the rest of this mushroom. Now typically I would drill in the front and the rear, but the rear is already loose, so we only need to do the front for now. We just need to get this apart. I'll take a small screwdriver and slide it in between the base and the body. Now we should come apart here. Yep. Ooh, -hoo, look at that goodness. That is mud and rust. Yeah, these wheels are pretty much not salvageable. And look at that nice muddy interior. Now I will drill this out now because this is actually attached to the interior. So obviously the base is just worn out. It has nothing to do with the rivet. I'm not going to drill the center out now. I'm just going to get the mushrooming away so I can remove the interior. Now you can certainly use a larger bit. I just grabbed the first one near me. Actually, we'll go ahead and use this machinist bit right here. I've used this before. It drills the small hole and gets rid of the mushrooming at the same time. Pretty nifty. This is what you get when it's done. Still may need to get a larger bit to avoid breaking off this tab. Now we should be able to peel it off 
ever so gently. There we go. <laughs> Look at that goodness in there. I'm not entirely sure what this little piece is right here. I've seen this on similar castings where they it's got the steering, uh, but this doesn't have that. It, uh, boy, it's good and dirty. Same with the body. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really dirty. I am going to have to drill out this rivet as well. Not all the way, just enough to get the mushrooming away from the glass. I'm not drilling all the way through this one, so I'm not really worried about going through my hand. Ah! Huh, kidding. I need to get the drill bit. Actually forgotten where half my tools are. It all feels new once again. There we go. This is one dirty casting. This is all the dirt and residue that's left over. So I'm going to have to give this a nice hot soapy water bath and then uh, we'll be back and see what it looks like. Right now I have the parts soaking in some warm soapy water. We're going to brush them off and get them as clean as we can. And after a little bit of scrubbing, we are much cleaner. Now this is not cracked. It does have a scratch on it and it is very fragile. I'm not sure how it didn't crack already. Here's the body. Much cleaner. And the interior looks almost brand new. Now the base is a bit of a mess. You can see the rust is still there. So we're going to have to take care of that. To take care of the rust, I'm going to try some of the Metal Rescue. Just enough for the base. The nice thing about this, it can be reused over and over and over again. I'm going to use the Dremel to flatten out the post. They had a little bit of the mushrooming left, so in order to get the base on relatively easily, I'll sand them flat. I'm using the small bit that I started with at the beginning of the video to drill those holes a little bit deeper. Then I will use my 256 tap in order to tap the holes. Once I have that done, I'll install the screws. Although I didn't film it, I did end up electroplating this chassis. And this is that finish you get after you electroplate it. The casting was in rough shape, so this was the only way around it. Then I take an SOS pad and some sandpaper to get all of that residue from the electroplating off. After this is complete, I'll use a wire wheel. Now this is not a very abrasive wheel at all. As you can tell, I'll use it right on my hands. And I'll spray everything down with some degreaser while using gloves. That way I'm not contaminating the metal with the oils on my fingers. Now on this casting, I'm not using a per se primer. I'm using a sealer. This is a Createx sealer. I chose black because I'm going to paint up the original color and the black will darken up the green I'm using just a little bit. These are acrylic or water-based paints, so I'm going to continue the theme with some water-based paint. This is Hobby Color, metallic green. It is very close to the original color and I think it turns out great. I need to thin this paint, so I'm using a one-to-one -one ratio with plain lacquer thinner.
I want this casting to be as close to original as possible. So the only thing I'm doing is painting the grill portion silver. The original casting had this and that's all we're doing. No other modifications. Now I'm using a mixture of half water and half it's a floor acid cleaner. I'm using this to clean off the base as well as some wheels and axles that I happen to have found. I believe that I had a casting at one time that I was going to make a video of and I totally botched it but luckily I kept the wheels and they work perfect for this restoration. Moving on to the axles. Now if you are familiar with a matchbox, you know that in order to remove the wheels and axles you need to grind or cut one side of that little mushroom off in order to remove them from the chassis or the base. Luckily, Bare Metal Hot Wheels sent me this tool that goes into a lathe. Now if you aren't familiar with Bare Metal, you should be. He's got way more subscribers, awesome content. I will be sure to link him in the description below the video. Go check him out if you haven't already done so. Awesome guy. Now I don't have a metal lathe, but I do have a wood lathe. I can put each of the pieces in a chuck and the friction will hold it in place and then I can spin that mushroom onto the axle. And the tires are from yet another Matchbox casting. I believe it was maybe a Mustang, but they fit just fine. And I'll give the interior and glass one last clean. Originally the glass was held in place by a little mushroom on the post, but I don't have that any longer. So I'm going to use this cement. This is tester cement for making windows. It will not fog up your plastic. And at last it's finally done. I would say this was one of the more challenging restorations, but oddly enough, I think it turned out better than 99% of the ones that I've done on the channel. And I attribute a lot of that to the paint. I typically don't use water-based or acrylic paints. I usually use enamel, like Tester's enamel, but this hobby color paint is phenomenal. I really like it a lot, and I think I'm gonna be using it from here on out, unless it's a redline restoration. Now almost everything on this car is original. That makes it really awesome, except for the wheels and tires. Now I did forget to mention one of the wheels are original. I was only able to find three wheels that I already had. And if you look right here, it's the right rear. That is original to the car. You can see it's got some pitting. It's not exactly perfectly round. And the tires came from, like I said, a Mustang. So three wheels, four tires, everything else is original rate it's a far cry from what we started from a small part of me wishes I would have left it alone simply cleared the patina and put new wheels and tires on it but you can't cry over spilled milk and there wouldn't be much content to put into a 10 minute video I think that's going to do it for this one hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you do subscribe also if you have any questions or comments feel free to post those below if you're looking for any of the tools or paints that I use in this video, be sure to check out the links that are located below the video in the description. I have a Amazon page that lists everything that I use on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.